You know, people like to poke fun at me for being late to the party or delaying videos for extended periods, but there's sometimes a massive upside to doing exactly that. You see, the subject of this video has gone missing in action numerous times as of now, and they seem to have returned now only to announce they'll be leaving again. But we'll dive deeper into that later down the line, don't you worry. That said, a lot of people have been blaming me specifically for one of the most recent situations surrounding them as well, for reasons we'll also dive into a bit later. I imagine if I released the original draft of this video, it would have required a complete follow-up of its own to address those comments. Lord knows this script has been tortured multiple times already. But thankfully, I'm not going to need to do that due to the fact I was patient enough to dot the I's and cross the T's before releasing anything. So this video is something of a reformatted version of the old one, with some fun additions to keep everything up to date and provide you with all the current information. Now then, let's get into the prologue. Hypnotist Sappho is a name that doesn't need much introduction these days. Rising to infamy in September of 2021 with her coming out video, just about every person on YouTube and Twitter had an opinion of her they wanted to share. In the wake of these events, I released a three-part series consisting of one live stream and two videos, and those caused my channel to grow from 3,000 subscribers to 10,000 over the course of a few months. Now, normally, I make a point not to discuss myself when giving you a timeline of events, unless absolutely necessary, but due to how intertwined my name has become with the subject, it's almost impossible to leave my name out of any conversation that involves Sappho. Truly, a Batman and Joker situation. If you think about one, your mind will almost reflexively think of the other by association. Over the weeks that those three pieces of content came out, numerous events unfolded that some may know a bit less about. One of those events is a partially failed doxing attempt by Quantum Kitty. If you need the lore there, I'll link a video below that talks about him and his doxing escapades. To summarize, Quantum Kitty got a few snippets of personal information about me from one of my exes, who then worked with Quantum to post a twit longer, claiming I was abusive towards him during our relationship. Sappho pushed the narrative that I was abusive towards my ex-boyfriend, despite knowing the narrative to be false. Sappho confirmed that she knew this narrative was false in a voice call between me and her months later, which I will play a snippet for you now. Say that I'm sorry for being so mean on Twitter. <laughs> I, I actually feel bad. No, you're not. I, I legitimately feel bad. No, you don't. You spread oh, around my. actual out false allegations from my ex of abuse that never happened, solely to assassinate my character. You're not sorry. Yeah, I know. Don't lie to I me. Know. Yeah, I, I am sorry, though. <laughs> don't yeah. lie to me. Come on, don't lie to me. No, Come I'm me. not lying, Coyote. I... Sappho clearly did not care for the truth in this situation. She cared to destroy my reputation in order to save hers. You may be wondering, Coyote, why did you go so far back in this story? How does this relate to the events happening now? Well, dear viewer, this is the theme of today's video. The lengths Sappho will go to hurt others to get what she wants. Some of the people involved in this topic are victims of hers who went on to commit their own atrocities, whereas some of them are innocent bystanders who committed the heinous act of caring for people she targeted. However, the one commonality between all of these people, whether they're innocent or not, is that Sappho sits at the root. This is a story about the crimes of hypnotist Sappho. Not every crime, but enough to help you understand why she shouldn't be forgiven nor should she be forgotten. I'll end the preface of this video with one last clarification. Not every allegation is going to be covered here. 
I am solely focused on the ones that can concretely be proven. In the event you want to know more after this video is over, you can check the description. I'll link more content about Sappho down below that goes into further detail. Now then, let's begin. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting oh, shit. shit to change. The difficult parts of telling this story aren't the parts that aren't true. It's trying to figure out which of the parts that aren't true are the ones that Sappho genuinely believed were the truth and which she knew were outright false. Fortunately, there are many resources that can be referenced to determine where the lies sit. And when I say lies, I mean statements she made that she knew were false when she made them, as well as actions she took which were clearly conflicting with ideals she preached. Lies are intentional, and even if some of her statements were not factual, I will not call some of those statements lies unless they contain deceptive and malicious intent. Believe me, there's plenty of that ahead. We don't need to waste time speculating about things we can't prove. We've covered the prologue of this situation, that being the drama as it began last year, and I've dropped you slightly in the middle as well to help illustrate a point, but now we'll get into the beginning of the quote-unquote current affairs. Sappho came back to the internet, much to most people's chagrin, with a video called Past, Present, and Future, which the description labels as going over the past, present, and future of the channel and my personal life, an explanation, and an apology. A few things of note are present in this video, and I'll play the clips that will be relevant right now. A lot of, quote, information on me was fabricated by stupid children doing things like attempting to correlate an IP with a physical address, outright doxing a different person with a different eye color because their name was Valerie and they happened to be in the Air Force too. I mean, seriously. How people justify that, or credible death threats and attempting to purposely cause harm, I don't know. I have nuanced opinions and think about things theoretically. But theory does not always translate into being practical or good. An interesting observation with this video is that, while the description claims this is an apology, the words I'm sorry, I apologize, or any variation of these don't exist in this video. There is no apology to be had towards any parties, and it is very strange she labels this video as any form of apology when there simply isn't one. Irrespective, the lack of an apology is one of the least important aspects of this video. Instead, the clips I presented you with are what we'll focus on. Sappho claims to have nuanced opinions, however to the best of my recollection, those nuanced opinions have never been shared. She's never expounded upon this notion, never clarified her beliefs, never wrote them out for her detractors like myself to view and discuss. It's a flat statement with nothing to support it. It would have equally as much merit as if I had said, the sky is pink and I have very nuanced opinions about that, and never explained a damn thing about it. They're simply hollow, empty words and I believe there's nothing left to be said about them. Now, before we move right along to the next two clips, you need a little bit more information. If you view this video now, the comments are disabled. When the video first released, however, that was not the case, and I left a comment of my own that I will share with you now. This is gonna be funny. Five little words. A small, innocuous comment. That's what would go on to start a chain of events that led us exactly where we are now. After I left that comment, Sappho replied with an essay of incoherent rambling, and then attempted to contact me on Telegram with a screenshot of it as well. 
I'll read to you a bit of our back and forth on Telegram. And for this segment, Cecil McFly has been kind enough to reprise her role as Sappho for this reading. Now then, let's begin. Hey Val, how's it going? Okay, until I saw your name. I'm glad I could ruin your day. Ruined? No. Annoyed. I'm glad you still have negative feelings just because you read my name then. Is that better? Sure. That's more accurate than you usually are. Going to a serious video just to be an arrogant prick, as always. Valerie, let's be honest. If you didn't want me to do that, you shouldn't have brought me up in the conversation. You welcomed me back into that when you put my name there. Valerie, actually. I'll meet you halfway and call you dog fucker. You did say I could call you that once upon a time. I guess to be fair, you're right. I only showed a photo, though. Eh, sure. Some small, small fucking part of me still feels bad hating you. I don't want to hate you. I don't want to hate anyone. <laughs> no, you don't, Val. When are you finally going to agree that we won't lie to one another? You do not feel bad. Is being honest really this difficult? I do, and that's where you're wrong. But you're so insecure and think everything has a double meaning. I don't feel bad enough to retract what I said about you. Valerie, I have a voice recording of you acknowledging that you know I never abused my partner. And yet, there's your comment. So. I have a recording where you look like a fucking clown. Hmm, that's nice. Yeah, sure is. So, if that's all you felt like saying, then I guess we're done here, yeah? I genuinely wanted to apologize. And instead, you acted like a fool. Sure. See in my response, then. Oh, that's right. You need to milk views. Because I'm the only thing you ever got decent views from. Aww. I mean, the Garo Shadow Scale video passed 100k, but sure, I never got good views aside from you. <laughs> okay, Lamal. But I do want to ask, how did this tactic work out for you last time? DMing me, I mean. Because I think roughly 225k people can tell you it ended badly for you. Her, they're literally about to cry and you can hear the pain in their voice. It's all an act. Also, aliens built the pyramids. They need to be harassed. It was fine, but you always find a way to twist words, don't you? Kyle. Say my name, Val. You have nothing you can threaten me with. I'm not threatening you, bozo. Sure. And the fact is, I don't actually know if you abused your partner or not. I only acted nice. Anyway, are you done yet? I mean, this tactic ended badly for you once. It ended badly for Sean. It seems like you're just not learning from the past. I am inclined to believe you did based on your behavior. You know you just admitted to being manipulative to try and have those you've wronged forgive you for your past wrongdoing, right? This undercuts your entire video all by itself. Thank you. Oh my god. You are such an immature child, dude. Have you done anything useful in your entire life? Well, how can that be true? If I were a child, you'd probably want to fuck me. Barry? Yeah, sure. Try. LOL. Yes, I have. The thing is, though, I don't feel a need to tell people all about the good things I do and have done. I just do them because it's the right thing to do. The idea that you think I need to parade around any good deeds I've done just proves you have a completely warped perception of what altruism is. There is something fundamentally broken in you. Explain to me what that is then. If you actually cared about me getting better, you already would have. Anyway, it was a good day to be alive. You literally almost caused me to commit before. Oh my god, did you almost get her to kill herself? It's kind of funny. <laughs> Do it, bitch. Okay, sorry. That good. And it's a good day to no longer be afraid of you. Your BS or your child hate mob. Sappho, I don't 
care if you get better anymore. I did care once upon a time, but that time isn't here anymore. It's why when somebody sent me fake DMs, I actually went ahead and posted a retraction. I hated you, but I wasn't going to publish lies on purpose. When you knew my ex was lying about me, you spread those just as a move. You acknowledged you knew it was false in the voice recording. I don't care if you get better anymore, Sappho. I care that you're not able to hurt people anymore. If you recall from the earlier voice call, where she confirmed she knew she was pushing a false narrative, then compare it with the pieces of this DM where she claims she only acted nice. It helps confirm that Sappho will lie and manipulate people to get what she wants. Either she was lying to me in order to try to get me to forgive her, or she's lying to the public. Either way, though, she lied in an attempt to manipulate somebody. I'm sure it's not much of a shock to many of you, but it will help paint the picture of who Sappho is in her heart of hearts as we continue. Another interesting observation is that, despite knowing the information was false, she made a conscious decision to continuously spread it and justified spreading it because she hated me. With this in mind, let's move forward. Now, as for the clips about how can people justify doxing or credible death threats, an interesting thing to note is that after Sappho and I had our conversation, she created a Telegram channel called Help Ban Coyote Lovely. The channel was created less than an hour after the conversation concluded, and over the span of a few weeks, Sappho posted what she believed to be my dox in there as well as messages encouraging her supporters to come to the listed residence and... Well, I think you can read the image on screen for yourself. This illustrates a pretty significant point, which is exactly how performative her public actions are when compared to the things she believes deep down. In her eyes, all who oppose her deserve to be publicly harassed, but if the tables ever turn and people begin to do it back, then it's a bridge too far. It shows a certain level of dehumanization for people who disagree with her, and while I'm not a psychiatrist or expert in that field, I would say it's not much of a stretch to argue that she possesses a sincere lack of empathy for other human beings. While we're on the subject, Sappho has continuously claimed she has never groomed any children, However, there is at least one significant case I can point at to dispute this, and that is the case of an individual known as Mama Paws. Some of you may be familiar with this person. However, for the uninitiated, I'll give you a brief summary of who she is. Mama Paws is a 16-year-old who became enamored with Sappho following the incident last year. She began speaking directly with her to the point that both began confiding in one another on a much more intimate level than most would be comfortable with. At some point after the two began to speak, a point I cannot exactly pin down, unfortunately, Mama Paws came out fully as a zoophile as well. In conjunction, Mama Paws has personally traded and distributed CP, which can be confirmed as she has admitted that she has previously done so on two separate occasions, the proof of which I will show on screen now. As you can clearly see, I had called Mama Paws out on this behavior, and her response was that she didn't do it anymore. I'd like to reiterate, she, quote, does not do it anymore, end quote. Not, she has never done that. I'd like to present a question to you, dear viewer. If Sappho had not been a significant influence in this young teen's life, do you suspect she would have ended up on the irreparably damaged trajectory she is on now? Or do you suspect she may have confided in a more responsible figure who could have urged her to get the help she needed? I wish I could answer that for you. But sadly, Sappho has so tainted this teenager's mind that I don't know if recovery is even possible. One may argue that this is an isolated incident, but it begs the question, if Sappho has corrupted one young mind to such an extreme extent, how many other teenagers and children has she done the same to? After all, 
The fact she's done this shows a willingness to do so if she thinks she can safely get away with it. Then one of us is going to have a problem, Connor. Because I don't intend to let you have your way. Once Sappho had begun the channel, she began using it to try and start a mass harassment and deplatforming campaign against me. I then began to interact with her indirectly using my own Telegram channel, mostly presenting mocking counter-arguments along with memes, images, and videos to illustrate the sheer stupidity of her behavior and how spectacularly she'd fail. Given you're watching this video more than a month after the dust is cleared, and I have not even so much as received a strike on the channel as a result of her campaign, we can see her efforts were a complete failure, much like I thought they would be. So let's recap. Using this channel, she posted what she believed to be my docs, she posted a threat to firebomb what she believed to be my residence, and she was also apparently attempting to gather people who harbored specific grudges against me around her, as though she was attempting to create some manner of anti-coyote lovely legion of doom. Yes, seems like a very stable and sane individual, and one you should absolutely trust. Sappho used that channel to spread any potential claim made about me, never once verifying any of them. After all, we've established she didn't care if any damaging claims against me were true, just that they were meant to harm my reputation. As you can see from the messages on screen, one such case came when a user made bold claims without evidence about my political affiliations, and then privately confirmed to me the intent of doing so was to see if Sappho would spread the claims. I reassured the individual that the fact she spread them without proof was good enough, as it proved she never cared for the truth in real time. After all, if she had, she would have taken the time to wait for any form of evidence that proved these allegations were true. But let's assume for a moment that's not enough for you. That everything I've presented already is simply not enough for you to believe that she would spread any allegation she could in order to make me look bad. Let me read you a conversation between me and Sappho that she didn't share with anyone else, and the reason why is because it was counterproductive to her Coyote Lovely is Evil narrative. Let me ask you something, Val. Off the record. What is it you're accomplishing? The reason I ask is because in a matter of days, you've not only backpedaled on most of the things you said in your update, you've engaged in them yourself. I'm trying to understand why you'd go out of your way to do that. Why decry doxing and death threats, then engage with the actions yourself just because you were teased? Why try to claim somebody targets minors, then use them to further your own ends? Why claim you are against people like Caro, then bring in people like Sean and Saul? who are no different. You don't need to answer me, Val, but I think these are things you should at least ask yourself and explore for your own well-being, even if you never give me an answer. Consider that the only act of compassion you'll ever get from me, because the fact is, if you don't begin asking yourself the right questions, then no amount of treatment can help you. Since you claim you're trying to help yourself, at least now you know a good place you can start. Well, you're right about something and it's that I'm not mentally stable, and any day now, it will finally be too much for me to overcome. I tried apologizing once and meant it, and I was insulted and treated like garbage. Then I make a very serious video, and you decide to laugh and say you're going to enjoy hurting me more, changing my opinion on things. I haven't done enough to warrant the amount of hatred you throw my way, so I want to hurt you just as badly and get even. People who use their platforms to cause suffering don't deserve them. You don't care about me, and I don't know why you're bothering to even try and make me feel better. I'm really not in the right state of mind to probably ever return. What else have I backpedaled on? You're not a tease. You want to harm me. I know you do. You're a special exception. I didn't decry doxing in general. I decried the idiots attempting it. You act like you care about minors and don't. I only pointed it out, and I brought Sean and Saul on because they're effective at what they do. Caro isn't useful. Ends justify the means. I refuse to believe you care at all, even if you're right. And now maybe you understand. 
Even if you're right, I don't know what to do. No matter what I do, it won't matter. At the end of the day, you're right. I don't care about you. I also don't need to to actually do something compassionate. What you choose to do isn't going to impact me in the long term. Moreover, I never said I was going to hurt you. I said I was glad I could ruin your day. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've even once threatened you with any level of physical harm. Irrespective, I'm not here to defend any of my actions. I came here to point out something I don't think you've considered, and I get the impression that the amount of time it took you to respond in conjunction with the last sentence of your message, you realize I have a point, even if you hate it. Regardless, I'm confident we both set our peace. I won't delete this conversation, nor respond to it further. I expect that even if you don't want to admit it, you have some thinking you need to do. If I genuinely wanted her to harm herself, why would I ever do anything compassionate towards her, like telling her important questions to reflect on? People who want to watch you suffer, watch anybody suffer. They don't do that. They don't try to tell you where they think you can start if you want to heal. They just sit there and let you destroy yourself. No. Sappho left that conversation out of the public eye because she believed I intended to do the same, and that conversation was one that did not make me look bad. The last thing I'll be sharing with you in this segment is Sappho's poor attempt to try to silence me using threats of litigation. She sent a cease and desist letter to me and my parents, which left all three of us very confused since, as Sappho knows, I'm in my 30s. My family doesn't care about what I do on the internet. I'm a grown man. Even if they did care, they're already very aware of what it is I do, and we were already aware that this was an inevitability. Nothing came from the threats. They were merely a scare tactic that failed miserably. However, I will read the emails to you now. I find them quite comical, as I'm sure you all will too. Good morning. My name is Valerie, and I am a victim of abuse, slander, targeted harassment, and other actions of Kyle f I am not the only one, though, as Kyle has also targeted minors with similar mental health issues. Attached is a cease and desist addressed to Kyle I would like for you to read and consider the fact that Kyle has advised and encouraged my suicide viciously multiple times, has levied incredibly slanderous accusations, including calling me a pedophile and rapist, which has never been substantiated in a court of law or law enforcement investigation, and continues to harass me in a targeted manner using his audience of nearly 12,000 people and private communities such as on Discord. I have contacted three different law firms and would rather mediate instead of filing a police report to get a no-contact order for the felony offense California Penal Code 401 and other instances where Kyle has caused undue and unbearable harm. I would like to handle this matter civilly and come to a legal agreement where Kyle or no longer harasses me. V slash R. Valerie Hello, Valerie. I've already taken the liberty of sending a few things you failed to mention to the other two recipients of this email, one being your threats against my life, another being your spreading of my personal information with the intent to harass me, in brackets, which also includes their names and contact information. I don't keep secrets from my parents. They already know the situation. Given that there is also provable evidence you are running the chat that has done these things, I am disinclined to acquiesce to your request. This is quite obviously the last act of a desperate person to try and have my provably accurate videos about you removed. Fuck off, Kyle thought I would bring you all back in the loop since your son is still acting like a moron, considering that you have no proof of this besides for screenshots and exports that could have easily been fabricated, you don't really have a leg to stand on, and for all I know you lied. The fact is, I have hard links to your heinous actions, the most important being Discord where they will retain the data for at least the next 90 to 180 days. For your parents, I'm going to attach a few images here to see how you really act online. I hope they read them. You have no proof of anything, Kyle. I have plenty of proof of you using your platform to harass and encourage me to suicide. You emphatically said you didn't care that people knew, so why don't you be honest here? Tell the court that while you're under oath. 
There's no excuse for a 30-plus-year-old grown-ass man to be saying such things to a woman barely in her 20s. Maybe it will take getting a summons to court for you to finally suck it up and not continue targeting kids and, and as a 30-plus-year-old, telling someone barely in their 20s to kill themselves emphatically. I guess we will see the public reaction to this and the family name and reputation. You have one day to reconsider. At the end of tomorrow, I will be filing that police report with your name and family contacts and also hiring a law firm to pursue action against you. V slash R, Valerie. Hello again, Valerie. Your cease and desist, which has provided thorough amusement, already included a copy of the first statement. Moreover, the email address you've been using to contact my father is now defunct, so I took the liberty of forwarding your emails to him personally. Once again, Miss... My parents do not care about this situation. I may be their son, but I'm an adult. They find it comical you're even trying to contact them, as do I. Furthermore, stating that you're barely in your 20s does not impact the reality that you are a full-grown adult who has, according to you, served in the military. You are not some poor, defenseless child. Please stop trying to portray yourself as such. It seems you do not understand what it meant when I said I am disinclined to acquiesce to your request. To make it simple, it means no. Have a good day. Go fuck yourself. Kyle You can't keep getting away with this! You can't keep getting away with it! Near the start of August, after everything had come to a head, Sappho made a bold claim in the Help Deplatform Coyote Lovely channel. She claimed she intended to take her own life. At the time, this was the last we'd heard from her. However, my belief was that this was performative, like many of her other gestures. And it turns out I was quite correct on that point. Only a few short days ago, at the time of recording this, she came out on her community tab to state she is, in fact, still alive, and, allegedly, she is getting help. <laughs> One time is funny, two times is fucking annoying, no? Personally, I don't believe she's getting any form of legitimate help, but rather this is another attempt to hide from what she's done. After all, this isn't the first time she's claimed to be getting help, nor is it her first claim that she's been hospitalized. Rather, I believe this to be one of many attempts to garner sympathy with what few supporters she has left now that everything else has failed. After all, why else would she hide the comments and disable them on that post? Sappho isn't gone, nor is she forgotten. You may be wondering why I've deemed it necessary to pick this subject up over a year after the fact, and the reason behind that is to help remind people of one grim fact. People like Sappho, like Quantum, like Caro, like Snake Thing, and like so many other monsters out there, they don't get better. They don't change. They don't improve. You don't have the ability to fix these people. You can't change them. All you can do is protect yourself from them by learning what they've done, helping others know, and staying as far away from them as humanly possible. I hope... I genuinely hope I never need to discuss Sappho again, but I sincerely doubt that will be the case. I am willing to bet money, and I think the smart bet is on this, that I'm going to have to pick this subject back up sometime in the future. But if these events have taught me anything, it's taught me that there is no amount of harassment somebody like her can send my way that will deter me from shining a light on their actions. I've been Coyote Lovely. Keep the information alive.